Good morning, and welcome to Immaculate Conception Church. Our celebrant for the Mass is Father John Antony. At this time, would you please take a moment to turn off your cell phone or any device that might be a distraction from the Mass. There will be a second collection this afternoon for the IC Church. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. Amen. Today we hear the, the name of Jesus, his holy name pronounced in the gospel. An angel tells St. Joseph that the baby shall be called Jesus. And that's foretold 600 years earlier by Isaiah the prophet that this child would be called Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus' name is Name means God saves. We ask him to fulfill the meaning of that name by saving us as we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord spoke to Asa, saying, As for a sign from the Lord your God, let it be deep as the nether world, or high as the sky. But all has answered, I will not ask, I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel, the word of the Lord. To all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy, 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you. And with your a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus came about when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they lived together. She was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, you will never guess what I did this weekend. Do you give up? I adopted a dog this past weekend. Yes, I am now a dog dad. <laughs> I guess I miss having Father Daniel's dog, Lola, around to go on walks with and to watch movies with. And now I will even have someone I can practice preaching my homilies to before I deliver them on Sunday. If my dog falls asleep, then I know my homily needs more work. <laughs> now, one of the most important things a dog dad has to do is give his dog a great name. Now, when I got the dog the, from the rescue, they said that his name was Presley. But I'm not a big Elvis Presley fan, so I would like to change the name and give him a new name. And I would like a little help from you, our parishioners. I have made a list of nine possible names and I put them on sheets of paper in the entrance of the church. You're welcome to take one and check one of those. There's also a blank at the bottom if you would like to suggest another name for Presley. There's also a picture of me and Presley so you can see which name would suit him best. I'll tally up all the votes and see what the congregation likes best and then I'll give Presley whatever name I want. <laughs> Because after all, the Catholic Church is not a democracy. <laughs> but I'd still like your, your input. It'll be fun. 
I mention all this news about giving names because surprisingly, that is exactly what our scriptures are speaking about today. For example, in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah tells King Ahaz, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. And 600 years later, we would learn what that virgin's name was, namely Mary. And we all know the name Emmanuel means God is with us. He has not abandoned us. And then in the Gospel today, an angel appears to St. Joseph in a dream and tells him some news about giving a name. He says, Do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now, unfortunately, an angel did not appear to me in a dream and tell me what name to give Preston. And so I need your help in our little parish poll. In a sense, you will be my angel. Now, you also should know that Presley is a, is a mix, he's a mutt. He's half Labrador Retriever and the other half a pit bull. So that means he'll be very loving, but also very strong and athletic. Now, names are not negligible or unimportant. They should be chosen carefully and lovingly. They are charged with meaning. And over the course of time, they carry historical and even cosmic consequences. For instance, the name Jesus literally means Yeshua, God saves. And that name touched the very deepest core of Christ's identity, who he was. He was born in Bethlehem to save us. The holy name of Jesus is so sacred and singular that modern Americans would never think to bestow that name on their own children. No one would name their child Jesus because that name is reserved for he alone who saves. At Mass, some priests and people slightly bow their heads whenever they hear the name of Jesus uttered in the liturgy. Why? Well, because St. Paul told the Philippians in chapter 2, verse 10 of his great letter, that in the name of Jesus, every knee would bend of those in heaven, on earth, and even under the earth. In other words, there is only one name that will save us, because that is what the name Jesus itself means. Namely, God saves. And God the Father gave His Son that name with unspeakable love and tenderness. My friends, let me invite you to give a little thought today, not just to your dog's name, <laughs> or even to Jesus' holy name, but to your own name and other people's names. Why? Well, because your parents chose your name as an expression of their love for you and their hopes and their dreams for all you might become. There's a lot of love crammed into that little word that is your name. And that is why everyone has a right to a good name and a good reputation. That is, not only should we not take God's name in vain, but we should also not take each other's name in vain. Like when we talk about other people by name. Names should be treated with utmost respect and even reverence. But did you know that God also wants to give you a new name? Not just all the names that you are called here on earth, but in the end, in heaven, we will all receive a new name. That name, too, will express God's eternal love and hopes and dreams for each of us, like the name Jesus does for His Son. That is why we read in Revelation chapter 2, verse 17, I shall also give a white stone upon which is inscribed a new name, which no one knows except the one who receives it. In other words, we will not know this new name that God wants to give us until we get to heaven. So all the names that we receive here on earth, the many different names that we are called from birth to death, will all be imperfect approximations to the new and perfect name God will give us in the end. 
In other words, we really don't know ourselves yet because we don't yet know our true name. But one day we will know it and we will know how much God loves us. And so in the meantime, let's work on a new name for Presley. Praise be Jesus Christ. Please stand. One of the names that we carry along in this earthly journey is Christian. And that means we all have a singular faith. And now we profess that faith together as Christians as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's gifts to us are unbounded. With confidence, we speak our needs and those of the world, adding the silent prayers of our hearts. For all who need the church, for humility in authority and perseverance in prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of believers and witnesses, for strong faith, lively hope, and deepening love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Deacon Bill Curry and Warren of Church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the deceased, especially Wayne, Lindsay, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our parishioners for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the needs we mention in silence. We continue to pray for peace in Ukraine, other areas afflicted by war. Pray for all the families that may be traveling during the holidays, that the angels keep them safe. For all family reunions, that they be peaceful and joyful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father God, we look forward to the coming of your Son, and we venerate his ever-Virgin Mother. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Just a reminder that there is a second collection today that we'll take up after communion. It's to uh, support our elementary school. Thanks so much.
and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold you, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We now reach our first sign of Christ Jesus.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Thank you for your help with the uh, second collection for the elementary school. Certainly appreciate that. Just a few announcements before we conclude this morning. As we mentioned, uh, the last couple of weekends, we're preparing to decorate the altar area with uh, beautiful red poinsettias. I think this year that will really kind of stand out and pop because of the blue carpet that we now have. And so, if you'd like to help us with that, we invite you to uh, purchase a poinsettia, maybe in memory of someone who has passed or in honor of someone, and we'll list all those people's names uh, in the Christmas bulletins so we can acknowledge them. So please buy, stop by the church office and uh, if you'd like to help, we'll make a donation for a poinsettia. The last day to turn in the do donation, though, will be December 19th. So uh, just in, uh, let's see, Monday, Tuesday. So please do that by Tuesday because you need to have time to get all the names in, in the bulletin. And you might remember last weekend I spoke about the bishop's letter in which he referred to his response to, the, to what we have all been talking about in the diocese, the 11 areas of concern and questions and ideas. But at any rate, uh, those were sent out to those of you who received the e-newsletter from the church, but in case you don't, there are still some copies of this. It's in English on one side and Spanish on the other, and I think there's still some in the entrances of the church. You're welcome to take one. Really would encourage you to, um, to take it and read it, um, because this is what Pope Francis is asking us to do, and what Bishop Taylor is working hard to do. They're seeing something, the, the movement of the Holy Spirit in the church, and so we should be uh, conscious and aware of what's happening uh, with that, and be informed as Catholics in terms of what's happening in our church. Uh, and so please, uh, if, if you're interested, take one and take some time to read it. And uh, the last thing is that, as you probably know, next weekend is Christmas. So Saturday and Sunday, all the Masses are for Christmas Day. So you kind of get a twofer you to go to the Sunday Mass and Christmas Mass. And, and uh, get one Mass covers both obligations. But uh, be mindful that the collection for next weekend at all the Masses will be for the Clergy Welfare Fund meaning for all the priests who are retired, there's a fund that supports them, which is a very wonderful thing. Uh, this fund provides a retirement and health care benefits to retired and infirm priests around our diocese. I hope to be one of those one day, and so <laughs> be generous, okay? Uh, that fund will come back to support me one day. But, uh, but also be mindful that that is the weekend, and every weekend we obviously depend on people's donations to make the church work, and so uh, be aware of that. And uh, maybe if you want to make a donation, make it during the week uh, because the Sunday collections should really go to the, to the retired clergy. That's always the case every, every Christmas. So both uh, good things to support. Thanks. Please stand. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, Lord God and Lord, by God. Thanks be to God. Thank you.